Hello everybody, Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com and today let's talk about the threshold on the envelope follower. But before we start, I want to remind you that there's a link below to the free content navigation guide, which is an easy to navigate web page with links to all the content on this channel. And besides that, in the near future, I'm going to begin adding tips and other bits of information that will only be available there. You know, things like simple steps that will get you started and up and running quick. Things that are in the videos, but are written down in simple steps that serve as quick reminders when you need information down the road. If you're working with programs like WaveLab or Cubase Plugin, or the Cable Guys Shaper Box 2 and many, many other projects that are in the works, then I know you're going to find, just like I have, that this is an invaluable study aid. And the other thing I want to make sure you understand is that this is not a simple PDF. This is a constantly updated page that has any information that uh, is new or anytime videos are changed, really anything updated. And once you have it, you will always have the latest information constantly updated. So if you haven't gotten it already, go to the link below, click on it, and save it to your favorites. It's my gift to you, and it's absolutely free. Okay, so let's get started. The concept of the threshold on the envelope follower is that you are able to filter out loud sounds and soft sounds. If you have a drum loop, and again, I'm recommending just stick with a drum loop for now when you're working on this, but let's say you have hard hits with the bass, kick drum, and the snare, but your hi-hats are, you know, in the background, you can set the threshold so it only lets through the kick and snare and hides the hi-hats or, you know, anything similar of that scenario. But there's a couple of things to be aware of. Um, first of all, let me show you this. So I'm going to bring in, here we have our cable guys. And I'm going to bring in the um, filter. And let me play this drum loop that I dragged in here. Now, look at the gray markings of the drum right here. They are pretty hot. You know, they're going right to the top of the screen here. So um, it's important whatever you're working with. I haven't really paid attention to this much, but now I'm seeing it's real important, especially for the results you're trying to get, and especially when we're dealing with the threshold. You're going to want to gain stage your effect, you know, well. So to do that, especially with Cubase, just bring up the, um, let's find the uh, channel strip. Move this over, bring the channel strip down. And on your channel strip, you have the pre-gain right here. So watch, when I play this, this is the drum loop channel now. <clears throat> so try to, yeah, on your, again, I don't know what your screen will show, if you can see it like I do, but you can see the gray drum here. I'm gonna bring down the uh, pre-gain. And see that? It brings the level of the drums down. If I bring it down too much, you know, it's just barely here at the bottom. So, you know, look for something somewhere in the middle. You're not looking for exact science here, but you want it, you don't want it peeking out at the top of your screen and you don't want it so low that it's, you know, gonna be hard to register, you know, hits. There you go. So see, I've got it kind of somewhere in the middle here. You can see that. All right, now once you kind of got your track gain stage the way you want it, let's go ahead and, um, Turn the envelope follower on here. And we're going to open up a little screen. And this orange bar here is our threshold. And you can see it's pretty hot right here. So I, in fact, I'm going to use this to, to gain stage even more than I did with the gray bar because I, this is way too hot for me to work with. I want to bring this down somewhere in the middle here. So I'm going to go back to my channel strip and my uh, pre-gain. I'm going to bring it down until I got more of a reasonable Let's turn it down way down. See how see that threshold goes way down to the bottom now? I'm gonna crank that up. I'm using the pre-gain knob here on my channel. If you can see, I'm, that's at the bottom of the screen here. That's what I'm adjusting that's giving me a di the different reading. There we go. So see that, it's about 75% on the, on the meter of the screen. It's not peaking at the top, but it's not way, way down at the bottom. So that's kind of that's kind of where you want it, things to be. I'm gonna back that up just a notch. There we go, something like that. Okay, now, with that in mind, we're gonna mess with the threshold and see what it does. So I'm gonna bring my filter down. There, so we know it's reacting to it. 
And the amount, I'm gonna take it up until it's past the blue bar so I know I'm in the positive with my hits. Okay, now I'm gonna start messing with this threshold. I'm gonna take the threshold all the way up and let's see what it sounds like. Let's bring this filter down a little bit more. All right, now I'm gonna bring the threshold down. Let's see what it does. There you go, it's starting to react only to the hits, but not very much. So let's take this amount and crack that up a little bit. There we go. See that? Only on the extreme loudest hits is it reacting. You're getting a brighter hit and the rest is buried in the filter. There you go, that's a nice effect. So that's kind of what you're doing. You know, you're deciding what part of your sample do you want to bury in the filter and what part do you want it to kind of poke itself out. If you take this threshold all the way down to the bottom, it basically turns it off. So every every part of the loop or every part of your, whatever you're affecting, sound is being affected. But if you move this threshold up, the more you move it up, the more the subtler sounds are gonna get removed until only the sharpest is left. That's a pretty cool sound there. Let's turn this uh, amount up even more and see what happens. Not so much. That's kind of what we're going to do with this one. Now, if we go, I, I found that it's it's more effective dealing with the positive side of this uh, on the amount of this bar here. Again, we talked about this in the last video, the difference between the positive side and the negative side. But if I go down to the negative side, it still reacts to the peaks, but it's nothing that I can really, um, I don't hear it the same way they do in the positive. It doesn't like poke through in any way. So be aware of that. If you're like experimenting with the negative side of these peaks, you'll be, you might be sitting there going, well, I'm not even hearing any difference because you may not be. So keep it on the positive side there. But it's definitely there, you get this cut through. And then let's, for the heck of it, let's play with a slope here. Well, that's really nice. goes up it opens up let's put another little curve point in the middle to see what happens that's interesting so there you go all right so anyway that's today's uh, video work we're gonna just look at focus on the threshold all the way down basically turns the threshold up all the, or off all the way up basically just engulfs your sound and somewhere in the middle whatever you want will only allow the loudest of the hits to come through all right if you haven't gotten it already get your navigation guide from the link below that's your new online manual that's what we're doing here is building a new online manual so check that out and uh, put it in your favorites and use it. You'll be glad you did. And we'll see you next time.